Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Last week was Unite LA, and today I'm here to share with you some of the coolest and most exciting things that I saw at the event. Now, this event was heavily focused on the new entity component system. It was kind of a key theme throughout the entire thing. There was an entire room and an entire set of sessions just dedicated to the new things and the new changes that are coming with this ECS. So, I think this was really heavily highlighted at the end of the keynote with the awesome new mega city example. It's a giant city created with a bunch of buildings that are actually built out of 30 to 200,000 entities each. These all have renderers on them. They LOD up to nice, beautiful, high definition animated models. And I was really impressed. They also had 5,000 cars flying around the city, navigating in their own lanes, avoiding each other, and over 100,000 audio sources. If you listen to the sample, the audio sources are actually creating that ambient noise. It's not coming from some pre-recorded track, it's actually the wind blowing out of the vents or the motors in these cars, the engines. These are all making that sound kind of come together. And I thought that was awesome. But of course the coolest part was right at the end when he pulled out a phone and showed the entire thing running on mobile. Like I said, really amazing system. I'm really excited to see where this goes. Of course, if you're looking to build a game right now, I wouldn't recommend diving into ECS unless you specifically have a use case for it. If you have a real deep need for it, sure, go for it. Otherwise, give it just a little while. I know that they're working on cleaning up the API and simplifying things even more. I expect things to change and just keep getting better, faster, and easier. Another key focus this time around was the FPS demo. Unity's actually got their team building out an FPS game, which I think is awesome. So they're going through and building a game with their own systems that looks great, runs great, and uses something awesome, the new UNet replacement. So this is a new high speed, high performance networking system. It is not a drop in replacement for UNet though. So if you were looking to just do a quick upgrade to this new system, it's not possible. I don't think it's even gonna be possible. It's a very different paradigm. In fact, it feels very much like raw UDP right now, but they have some really good examples in the FPS demo of how to use that system to build a really good, high quality, highly performant FPS style game. So if you wanna build a, a first person shooter that feels nice and smooth, runs great, definitely grab the FPS demo and start playing around. It's supposed to be a starting point for games like this to be built in the future. And I think that uh, sometime in the near future, they'll be doing some other game types as well. So if you wanna build an RTS or a turn-based game, just keep your eye open for the updates and see when that new stuff kind of comes and when we get those new features in there. Now the editor is also getting a lot of changes. In 2019.2, we'll be getting a new revamped flat theme. I'm not sure if I like it yet, but I haven't really played with it, And but it does look pretty cool. We'll also be getting the scalable text sizes in 2019.3. So if you're working on a 4K screen and dealing with that tiny little text, it will be going away, it's still a little while away, but it is coming. And this is all gonna be using the new UI element system. I think the goal here is to have a new system that works in the editor and in game. I'm not sure how that's gonna work out, but I'm excited to try it out and see. It does look a lot more like a XAML or CSS style system. So we'll see how well it fits in, but I think that they probably know what they're doing. Another change that's coming for the editor though is launching. In 2019.1, the project picker launcher that you normally get is going away and it's gonna be replaced with the Unity Hub 2.0. This lets you search for different things. It lets you, I believe, create custom templates and uh, there were a lot of other things in there. I don't even remember them all. A lot of cool stuff though. The package manager is also getting upgraded and we'll be able to pull in packages directly from a Git repo or from NPM, which I think is awesome. I'm really excited to see how that works out and start building some custom packages for the companies that I'm working with and for my own projects. But on top of that, we'll be able to create assets for the asset store that now go through the package manager, which I thought was pretty cool as well. The new input system is also gonna be sometime in 2019. I didn't get to play with it yet, but I did see some screenshots and it does look really cool. It looks like a nice replacement that'll get rid of that needing to find things by string name or that weird little uh, editor that's in there right now that's not really user friendly. This new one looks like it's gonna be very simple to use. It's gonna clean things up a lot and 
I'm kind of happy to see it coming. I think it's about time and really cool. Uh, Unity Tiny is also coming soon, which allows you to build games that are, like the name says, just tiny. They said the games would be around 100 kilobytes to 5 megabytes. Seems super small to me, and I think it's really impressive that they're able to kind of squish everything down into that little size and make it a nice tiny package that can then be distributed on you know web apps or wherever we need super small games, I guess. Virtual reality is also getting a pretty big native support upgrade, it seems. We're going to get native daydream support sometime in 2019. We're getting cross-platform, they say XR input. I assume it's more like VR input for the controllers. That's coming in 2019.2 and haptic feedback in 2019.3. I don't know how this is all going to work out, but I'm hoping that it works as a great replacement for both the Oculus system and the Steam VR system. It'd be great if we could just have one system that works across everything and not needing to switch back and forth and kind of learn both of those. The build system is also getting an upgrade. We're gonna get a bunch of new integrations. There was a large list of them. The ones that I wrote down and cared about though were Trello and Slack. I'd love to get some Slack notifications and even a Trello card when a build fails. So I'm excited to see that coming. Collaborate's also getting updated one of the main things that prevents me from using Unity Collaborate in real projects is the lack of branching and merging. But they announced it this time around. Branching is coming to Collaborate along with in-scene comments. And I'm really curious to see how in-scene commenting works. I think it could be really cool, especially for just a group of designers wanting to leave a note like, hey, this tree is here for a reason or we're moving these things over here. Go ahead and delete them or whatever the comments are. I'm just really curious to see how that works out and how people actually use the system. The scriptable render pipeline is also going to leave preview in 2019.1. In addition to that, there were a bunch of scriptable render pipeline features that I don't really know what they mean yet that are coming soon, but I did recognize the GPU light map baking, which I think is gonna be awesome in 2019.3 and really speed up that bake time. I also learned some really cool baking tricks, but I'll be sharing those in another video where I kind of dive deeper into this stuff. The terrain system's also getting an update. In fact, that's available now in the 2018.3 beta, I believe. It'll be final in 2018.3, but in 2019.1, we're getting holes in the terrain. I know a couple of people who are really excited about this, and it's, of course, a very important, cool feature. If you want to have a terrain that's got a cave in there with a dungeon going down, Holes are the easiest way to do that, and now it's coming, so be ready. Another thing that's actually in 2018.3 that I didn't know about and learned about and got really excited about was the new character system for 2D. In this, you can actually have a PSD file that's got multiple layers there, and then you can import that PSD and it will create a character for you. And then you can rig this character up with bones and animations and have them kind of moving around and being an awesome cool animated character, all with built-in systems. On top of that, we're getting 2D lights, which look amazing. I saw the before and after pictures, and it's just night and day, right? The games look way better with lighting, and I like that we're gonna get this as a core feature and not have to do weird hacky tricks to make it seem like there's lighting. So this is awesome, really excited for it as well. But one of the things that was a big shock, I'd say the biggest shock for me of all of this whole event was the announcement of a visual scripting system. Now this may have been announced somewhere else before and I just didn't see it, but there's gonna be a new scripting system in 2019.2 that looks and feels probably a lot like Bolt or Playmaker or Blueprints. And I'm really curious to see how this compares. Is this gonna be you know, the new way to do it for people who wanna build games that can't really code or don't like to code? Or will it be more of an AI system, which is kind of where I generally plug in things like Bolt and Playmaker? I don't know, but I'm kind of really pumped to see. I think it's exciting and I'm, like I said, really excited that they're just working to fill in all of the gaps and make these things core parts of the engine. As you can see, there was a ton of stuff announced at this event and a ton of things released that FPS demo is available right now. A lot of these things are in the 2018.3 beta and some of them are in the experimental builds. So if you're interested in checking them out, definitely keep an eye out for the Unite videos. They'll get released on YouTube probably sometime soon. They may even be out already. So just keep an eye out for those and keep an eye out for my videos 
in the future where I'll be diving a bit more in depth into some of the cooler things in this video and some of the things that I didn't really dive into because I didn't want to spoil them yet. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, have a great day. Keep coding and...